Hello students, this is another short video that is going to show you about the final draft. So here we are in the Google Classroom and you can see this is the American Revolution essay banner and uh, I have added the final draft up to the top of that section and the final draft is waiting for you here. It is simply a blank document. It is a blank document for you to type into. And I've also included in um, this lesson the rubric. And the rubric has been there before in the classroom. And I put it here again for you to refer to. And I just want to point out the last row on page two. And this has the formatting requirements uh, in the final presentation section. And here in the three column, you can see the basics that should be done. It should be word processed. It should be formatted flush left or align left, I believe it's called in Google Docs. And um, it has the essential question as the title. Uh, or if your essential question is the hook or the uh, beginning sentence of your first paragraph, then you can make the title just something related to your essay. Or uh, as I'll show you in the sample uh, in a, just a moment, you can add a cover sheet and put your title there. Uh, please make the font no bigger than 14 point. Uh, I have, and then make it a readable font, not cursive or old English. I'm not telling you a specific font like only 12 point times Roman. Uh, I, I want you to have some choice, but make it easy on me. Remember, I'm old and my eyes are going bad. So uh, anything like too curly Q or fancy um, makes it more difficult to read. And this is also a formal writing piece, not um, a creative writing piece like poetry or something like that. So. Uh, make it very digestible for the eyes. Let me show you an example of what I mean by a couple of those things. Here is my final draft document. And I'm just going to paste. So the align left or flush left means that the straight line on the left margin is where all the text begins. And then it is ragged over on the right hand side. Um, if you're not doing a cover sheet, your title should be at the top and it should be centered. And uh, my example would be my example was the French and the American Revolution, uh, centered at the top with the space before you start your essay. And then beyond that, uh, if you're not doing the cover sheet, you should absolutely have your name on the essay. And traditionally on the right, go ahead and your name. And uh, this is the American Revolution. Or you can put AR essay and then. your either first period or sixth period. And again, the title and the heading, that is if you are not doing a cover sheet. When uh, I say cover sheet, I have included a sample. This is a sample from uh, a previous year. And a cover sheet is a separate sheet of paper, a separate page. And it has your title, it has an image that relates to your topic, and then it has your heading here, your name, the class, and which period you're in. Uh, and that it is the American Revolution essay. Now, back to the uh, Google Classroom. Um, the Other thing you're going to have to add that is not here is the works cited or bibliography. And I'm going to show you a really easy way of how to do that. Now, if you go back to the Google Classroom, uh, 
you will remember, we did a lot of our research, and in some cases, all of our research, out of the American Revolution live binder. And if, uh, depending upon your topic, uh, here is where credible resources are for you. And if you are going to, uh, you are going to need to uh, provide a bibliography of at least three of your credible sources. And I'm going to show you how EasyBib can do this for you very quickly. Uh, if your topic, for instance, was women in the American Revolution, here is the main tab, and then here are your sub tabs. Uh, if I used this article, American Athenas, then uh, I don't want to use the LiveBinder address. LiveBinder is not the source. LiveBinder is like the bookshelf. So in the library example, the bookshelf isn't the source. The books on the shelf are the source. In the case of this live binder, it is the shelf. It is this link right here or this one right here that takes you to that web page. So I'm just going to simply copy that link, right click, copy, and then I'm going to go back to my final draft. And what I want everyone to get for their Google Docs is an add-on called EasyBib. So it's not up in the apps option. It is an add-on. And when I go down to EasyBib Bibliography Creator, I can start it by clicking Manage Bibliography. If you don't have it, go down to Get Add-ons. And EasyBib is usually right near the top. You click on it. Mine's already installed, so I don't want to uninstall, but you'll have the install option. And then if you've done this before, you'll know that um, it'll take you and ask you to agree to sharing your uh, some information from your school account. And this is one of our Google apps for education, uh, or it is technically an add-on. It is okay for you to share your school email and your school account information with EasyBib. Once you have EasyBib loaded, then you can open it. I will tell you that uh, where I, when I go to EasyBib, I have the Manage Bibliography option. Uh, when you first load it, all you're going to see is the Help option. And what you need to do is log out of your Google account, log back in, and then you will see Manage Bibliography. And when I click it, EasyBib opens over here where the Explore bar is. And what makes this so uh, easy to use is uh, you've got buttons up at the top. If I'm citing a book, I click that button. A journal article, that button. In my case, I grabbed the URL for a website. I'm going to click that button and I'm going to paste the URL in there and I'm going to click search. And it's going to search and here it is, uh, American Athena's Women in the Revolution. And then it is we select that. And it is going to build the citation. And here it has built that citation right here. And if you click on that one and then add bibliography to doc, you will notice that at the bottom of your page, it has put the title works cited and it has added it down below in MLA format. Now this is missing some items. It is missing from, uh, and that means that things like the publication date and some others are missing from the metadata. And if you encounter some of those issues, I can show you in class how to add those using EasyBib. When you're done with EasyBib, it closes like that. And again, you need three credible sources to complete this project.